How's it going, everybody? Beaverworks Race Shop. I am going to show you the method that I'm using to create real riders into real racers. Now, what do I mean by real riders into real racers? So, everybody knows that real riders suck on the track because even the even though the rubber wheels look so good and they run good like kind of roll them around they're not too bad but on the track they stick you got too much side drag and they got too much friction just rolling straight because of the rubber you know so you get a real problem with them on the track just because they're too sticky they look cool but especially when you're using fat track they have a tendency to go a lot slower even if they do make it but they'll usually get hung up in the corners we all know that but primarily because of this motion you know they're so sticky 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 so here we go now i got my other one here two of the same i'm going to race them to show the difference because everybody's seen this guy Put a picture up and he hopefully will be making a trip to New Zealand but what I've done is if you look at these real riders real close it's the same tire but I've put a coating on it a nice hard shell which then gives me it slides real nice and easy. Where's this one's? Oh, not that guy. This one here. Sticks. And it's kind of rough here. This guy slips around real nice. Right? And it has loose friction in there again. I've done a lot more work on them, but the big deal. I'll show you what this guy, what I've been doing. Is doing this to the real riders. Now, you can see here, this one's not quite as complete because I've only done it once. This usually takes about three or four tries with this method to get a nice, solid, consistent sheen on these tires that will allow them to still be smooth and slip around. Now it's no different than doing a good paint job because what I'm doing is I'm taking this stuff fifteen minute DJRA mid cure epoxy. Mid-cure means it's not going to get super brittle hard, but it will still retain a good sanding, basically. So I'm going to take this stuff, and what we've got down here is a piece of parchment paper. In case you don't know what parchment paper is, kids, go ask your mom when she's making muffins, and she'll tell you exactly the whole story. Tell you the truth, you probably got a roll of it somewhere in your house. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll mix up a batch of epoxy, and then I'm going to spread it all out in a nice little puddle right here, and then I'm going to slowly dip the wheels and roll the wheels around in it, and I'll do it with the rear axle, and I'll slowly roll the wheels around in that, too. Because uh, this stuff is 15 minutes, I'm going to actually sit here and roll it around and back and forth for about four or five minutes. And then I'll take it off. I'll let it sit for about five minutes. And then I'll bring it back over and I'll go it again. Just so that you can try and smooth it out as much as possible. And then once that dries, and I let it cure for a whole day. So this video is going to take a little while to do. <laughs> And then once it's been done, what I'll do is I'll take a piece of 1,000 grits. 1,000 grit, 
or, uh, you know, I'll go like 14, 1200, something like that. And then what you're going to do is I've already started with this guy. And I can show you. Is then you can just roll it back instead of just rolling it back and forth like this. Just hold it on about a 30 degree angle and then let the wheels skid back and forth. And as you can see, the wheels are turning as you actually move it back and forth over the sandpaper. You go on this angle for a little while and then you can switch it over to this angle and same deal. As long as those tires are spinning while you're moving it on the sandpaper, you want to get some abrasion, smooth it back out and put a nice rough edge on it like that. Enough rough coat so that when I can put the second coat of epoxy on the tires, it will take. I usually do about three or four coats with the sanding in between and you get a nice, nice result right there. Now this one took a little bit of wheel hogging and a few other little tricks that I had to do as well. I'll, sh I'll walk through it with this guy when I put him together. This fella right here, he's been through two treatments and you can see eventually it'll start to fill the tread in on the tires. Like that. I don't know if you can see it there or not. Don't you know the way these real riders look? They've always got the they've got the uh, treads right in them, kind of like this guy right here. There is a Nova, and you can see the tread on those rubbers. This guy hasn't had anything. Right. Eventually that glue will start filling in all that tread. And then you're just going to end up with one hard shell surface on the outside. Now if you do this without doing the sanding in between and everything, what's going to happen? It already started on this wheel. Is it can crack right there and shatter. You don't want that. So this is why multiple coats and taking the full time to let the glue cure in between is such a big deal. And you're gonna end up eventually with a really nice result. Like I said, you can barely see the treads on those tires anymore. They're pretty much gone. And there's a nice shine. And those are the rubber reel riders. All right. So I'll show you how I do this.
All right. It is the next day, and we've got some very good results here. Once this stuff gets nice and hard, it's on there like eggshell. It's got just a nice little shell on there. They slip around good on the plastic. Look at that. Nice, nice. So I'm still going to sand these guys down a little bit. One thing I noticed about these, real riders have got really thick, good, beefy axles in there. But uh, factory, they still look like they're a little gritty and don't quite have the performance on that axle that we're looking for. So extra step I'm going to show you here for fun is polishing axles. So, I've already got this guy from the uh, Chevy here. Everything's metal in there, which is good. I'll come back and finish this all up with a JB. But, I've already gone and picked out our little nubs in there so I can pull our axles. Front and rear. Who loves the real riders? Look at them, eh? And now, real racers. A nice shiny coating on them. Not bad, eh? But in the meantime, I'm going to slip them down like that. And we're going to put a little axle polish into the ends here. You don't have to polish the whole axle, just where the wheel's riding. You can see there's some crusty corrosion and stuff all over the end of that axle already. I don't know if we can focus it. This thing's got to focus on it. But yeah, there's some uh, debris and carnage to pull off the ends of those axles, both sides. And uh, we're going to break the Dremel out. A little bit of a uh, compound that comes with it. And just uh, give her about 20, 30 passes each side and polish those bad boys up yeah, just wipe all that off Make sure she's clean and reel back on there again Look at that. That's a huge performance difference. Right there, that's the side that's polished. She just keeps spinning. Go over to the other side, they haven't polished up yet. Look at that. Stops. Other side you polished. Watch this. Nice and free, smooth. Huh? That's what polishing axles does, huh? All right, let's work the other. Let's get the other side done here. You gotta hold it just such a way that you can make sure that axle sticks out, and uh, you still got lots of post to polish hanging out there.
Look at that. Big difference. Oh, yeah. Okay. Rinse and repeat. Axle number one. On at axle number two. Hi, everybody. All right, we're back here with our Ford. And we're about to taking it out. I polished the axles. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now I'm going to put it back up into my homemade jig here. You can get these things at Redline Derby too. At the time I built this thing, apparently they were out of stock, so I just kind of made my own. Right, what I got here is a batch of JB Weld mixed up. I just need a bit. Now with this guy, just in the process of removing those axles, has marred those surfaces up pretty good. That's kind of what you want. You don't want it to go in there smooth. You want it to be all jagged and crap so that your JB's got something to hold on to. If it was just a smooth surface, you'd go in there with a scriber or a <clears throat> needle center punch or something like that just to muff the surface up. All you got to do is a nice little glob right where, that, right where the axle pins were. Smeared around in there good. That's all you need. Right there. Not that much. All right, a little good bead-sized blob on there. And the fun part, usually the uh, JB will hold it in there, but then uh, you flip her upside down, get it on the jig. There you go. You want to get up on top of it here and make sure everything's nice and square. Actually got little lines on there that squares it up for me. There you go. <clears throat> a little bit of weight on top of it. Don't need much. All right, that's where you let it sit for a day. All right, I figure I better wrap this video up because it's starting to get pretty long. So what we've got here is we've got Ford, and he's still got to go through one more sanding, one more coat. But I showed you putting the axles in there, and they come out nice and straight and good and solid. They're in there. And in the meantime, we have finished the Impala. Look at that. It's exactly the same. But now, he slips around. And he's good to go. You know, again, not like the, not like the rubber rubber. It sticks. There's a rubber rubber. Just sticky, sticky rubber. And, modified real riders. Nice and shiny. So 
all that work doesn't even change the look, just changes the performance. Remember, we uh, polish those axles up. One thing I haven't done yet, and I'll uh, do before we actually do a race, is come back and give it a little bit of a uh, few touches of some graphite dry lube in there, because that really works too. And then we're going to have ourselves a little race. We'll turn it over to the Igloo Proving Grounds and have a uh, feature race, show you the differences and the uh, modification pluses. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Sorry it was such a long vid, but I figured I might as well show you the complete process. I didn't show you the uh, putting the screws in so that you can actually take it apart, put it back together again. You can redo the coatings. You can do different stuff. I'm going to do that one with this too. Oh, not that guy. This one. <laughs> I'll drill those out and put some screws in it. All right. Thanks for watching.